What are you doing, you useless scum? The door won't give! It's too strong! Get back there and smash it down! But nothing can reach us! Run, you won't reach it. Run! 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 Hey folks, how's it going? Recently, one of my adorable patrons was kind enough to gift me some garbage, and after a quick examining of the material, I hatched a plan. I started by sanding down the plastic so that it would make better contact, and then gluing some pieces together to form the shape of the head. From there, I took these same plastic eggs and cut out the shape of what would be the front of the nose, which I could then glue on. In this project, I used a lot of silicon sealant to both help bind things together better and to also fill in some of the gaps between pieces. With the base complete, I could finish up the nose job by gluing together some plastic and cardboard to form the nostrils. With its nose now looking stunning, I bulked up the head to match the shape a bit better and then went through a few failed attempts of adding some detail to it, before finally just settling on adding more plastic to add lips and teeth. I then used more of these plastic scraps to give it some eyes. And with the head complete, it was time to give it a body. I started off with this plastic bottle and cut off the opening so that the head would attach to it better. And after the head had been glued on, I used more of the sealant to give it a stronger bond and a better looking transition. I had almost forgotten to give it some ears, so to make sure that nothing could sneak up on it, I made two diagonal cuts in the straw that I could glue on so it could hear better. But now that the head is complete, which I definitely didn't just claim earlier, we could move on to cultivating some mass. To create the base of the legs and arms, I cut more of these plastic eggs in half and glued them to the body, filling in any of the gaps with more sealant. I also thought it would be good to cover up what is clearly the base of a bottle. Before attaching the arms themselves, I thought it'd be a good idea to add a bit more detail. I wanted to make it look like it had fur, so I used a hole punch to cut out a bunch of these triangles from some cardstock, which I could then glue on. This process ended up being quite the pain, so while I had intention to do much more of the surface in this style, I ended up just calling quits at some point. So now that we can get back to the arms, I started with this tube and cut it into four equal lengths. I could then cut a small notch into the base of each tube so that it would attach to the plastic egg on the body a bit better. To create the hands that Grand uses to bash things in with, I started with these bottle caps and cut five spikes in them.
To help attach the hands a bit more securely to the arms, I drilled a hole through both the hand and the end of the arm, allowing me to run a wire through both holes to give the arm more strength. Afterwards, I also put a bit of glue to attach things better. And then I went back to the trusty sealant to hide any of the wire or gaps I didn't want. After which I could attach the arms to the body. However, since the arms are a tube, it does leave a big gap at the end that the sealant wouldn't really be able to fill too well. So I took the end of this bottle cap and broke my scissors. Using my wire cutters to cut out the rest, I could then glue it on to the end of the arms to form the cap. To help Grand attach to some chains and fulfill his destiny as a battering ram, I drilled in some holes, which I could then screw in some hooks into. And with that, the ram of Grand is complete, so it's time to move on to the base. To start the stand, I cut out some pieces out of chipboard, which I'm later going to layer on to form the base. Since the stand has a lot of repeating parts, and I'm going to have to do each of these steps a bunch of times, I'm really only going to show each part once, just to save some time. So after having cut out all the pieces I needed, I could glue them together on top of one another to get the height that I wanted. I decided to build the base this way rather than just starting with a huge block of something like foam to help give me more precise height details but also so I could form those gaps that I left in the side. I wanted this model to actually be able to roll, so I glued some straws into those gaps I had left intentionally which would later be able to house the axle for my wheels. All the three different components that form the base of Grand are connected by a giant piece of wood. So I figured I would use wood for that. And once that was all glued together, I could work on the pillars that would actually hold the chains. I didn't really feel like laying together a bunch of chipboard again, so I went with foam this time. The foam, though, wasn't quite the right width, so I glued two pieces of chipboard on that, which ended up giving it a bit more stability also. I could then glue these pillars to the base, trying my best to make sure that everything is perpendicular. And apparently my best isn't that good because they didn't really come out perpendicular. Since the three floor components of Grand are wood, I decided to make them look like wood using more wood. I could then start working on all the metal pieces. I cut out some of this plastic board that I had from another project and started gluing it all along to form some metal paneling. I also used a bit of cardstock for these more bendy parts of the metal. With much of the metal paneling not done, I decided it'd be a good time to add more stability, so I glued on some of these wooden beams accordingly.
Grand had these spiky wooden beams connecting the three sections. So I used a wooden dowel and glued on the end of some toothpicks to them. The top of all the pillars contained a fire brazier in this sort of disc shape. So I found this tomato holder that I had from a long time ago and cut out the rings from it. Which I could then glue on to the top of the pillar. Surrounding these fire dishes are some more metal spikes. So I cut out some more of this panel line and then bent it into the shape that I needed. Grand stand is covered in spikes sort of all over the place. So I took these little wooden clips I got from the dollar store and cut off the ends to create some spikes. I could then glue them on where appropriate. For the fire brazier itself inside that dish I made before, I took these game pieces that I had and cut off the top. And with that all done, it was time to make some wheels. I started by taking some bottle caps and drilling a hole in the center, which I could then glue a washer on the other side to give it a bit more stability. To create the wooden spokes of the wheel, I took a washer and then glued some wooden pieces to it. I could then cap it off with another washer to make a nice little sandwich. I then measured where I needed to cut these spokes so that it would fit inside the wheel. And once I did that, I could put all the pieces together and glue it sturdy. And with that wheel done, I just had to do that about a million more times. I could then use these wooden dowels as an axle, put on the wheels for all the stands, and add this cap that I made off camera to the end of it. And then finally, just before all my motivation gave out, all I had left to do was to add some detailing. I had these leftover ornament tops from a few failed projects that I found were perfect for connecting the wooden beams together. And then I just wanted to give a bit more detail to the metal paneling, so I glued on some rhinestones to act as rivets. And with construction done, it was finally time to start painting. The painting process for this was pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to say too much. I basically just painted the metal to look like metal and the wood to look like wood.
I wanted it to look like fire was coming out of ground, and to make that look a bit more dramatic, I started by painting the areas where it was going to come from with different shades of yellow and orange. I could then add some hot glue, which I could poke and prod until it reached the shape that I wanted. I then went back with some glass paints and colored all the hot glue to make it look like fire. And with that, all that was left was to assemble everything together and call the project done.